Hello everyone, my name is Cherie James. I'm a yoga and a meditation teacher and for the last 10 years I've been running a very special spiritual journey in the Himalayas of Nepal called Discover the Peace Within. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it, including a breakdown of the day-by-day -day itinerary. But before I go ahead and do that, I just wanted to first of all share an important secret with you that really encapsulates the deeper essence of what this retreat is really all about. So like most people, especially if you're living in a Western country, I'm sure you've spent a lot of your lifetime searching for happiness, for fulfillment, for success, for answers outside of yourself. So perhaps in your career, in your relationships, in your striving after goals or chasing after specific desires. And unfortunately, as you may or may not have discovered, this doesn't really lead to lasting happiness. We all experience ups and downs in our lives and a sense of dissatisfaction, which is really just the nature of looking outside of ourselves for our fulfillment. Um, so unfortunately, most of us are really looking in the wrong direction. Because that which you've really been seeking has actually been inside you all along. So there's actually a place inside you that knows only serenity, stillness, and deep contentment. And I like to call this place the peace within. And it doesn't matter what's happening in your external life, if there's difficulties or hardship, this place is always there. However, if you haven't experienced it, you're not alone, and it's certainly not your fault. It's unfortunately extremely easy for this place to become hidden in modern day life, buried under layers of tension, years of work, routine and stress, ignoring your inner voice, putting others first, um, or simply just moving too fast through life. But thankfully, even though it may be buried, you can never actually lose this place. You can rediscover the peace within. And when you do reconnect with it, I can guarantee that everything in your life can shift effortlessly. You can find a sense of ease even if life gets hard. You can more easily tap into your intuition and get clear on what serves you and what just doesn't. And joy, inner peace and compassion can become your natural state of being. And as you become fulfilled from within, you can begin to flourish into the beautiful potential that you were born with. Now, thankfully, there are places in this world where this peace and wisdom was never lost, where the spiritual and the sacred are still an everyday part of life. The Himalayas in particular have long been known as the world's Shangri-La, the original birthplace of meditation, yoga and spiritual wisdom. Thousands of generations of monks, yogis, sages have been called to this sacred place to meditate and discover the deep peace and stillness at the very center of their being. And now it's your turn to follow this calling. The question is, are you ready to heed this call and join us on this once in a lifetime adventure? So I'd like to introduce you now to Discover the Peace Within, which is a transformational 10-day spiritual journey in the Himalayas of Nepal. The dates are October the 29th to November 7th, 2019. And I created this retreat with a very unique itinerary so that you have the opportunity to obviously go within and get a taste of this inner peace for yourself 
um, but also to have a really epic, inspiring adventure in this truly amazing country. So I'd like to go through the itinerary because I do believe it's very special. So the first day begins um, later in the evening at 6 p.m. because during the day, this is the time when most people fly in. Uh, we meet everyone at the airport and everyone is transferred back to very comfortable and peaceful resort on the outskirts of Kathmandu. So this resort is set in acres of beautiful gardens. Um, features a lovely pool and also an Ayurvedic wellness spa so if you get in early you might want to enjoy a nice treatment or just relax in the gardens uh, until we begin later in the evening at about 6 p.m. So we start off with a welcoming ceremony getting to know each other a little bit uh, we also have a traditional energy cleansing with Tibetan healing bowls as well as the opportunity to set our intentions for the journey ahead and then after our ceremony, we enjoy our very first sumptuous banquet dinner together and then head off to bed because we need a good rest for the next day. So day two, we start off with morning yoga and meditation at about 7 a.m. And it's a very gentle class to help release any discomfort that might be left over from the flight. Uh, followed by a very grounding meditation session. So you can really start the day off right. Um, followed by our delicious buffet breakfast. And then we jump on the tour bus and head up to Copan Monastery. So this is a Tibetan monastery set high up on a hill with beautiful views over the Kathmandu Valley. And this is a, you know, a living active monastery. It's home to about 360 monks and lamas from all over Nepal aging from six to 70 years old um, and also a lot of visitors from around the world visit this beautiful monastery to to come and study the teachings of the buddha, buddha and just enjoy the spiritual atmosphere if we're lucky if the monks are available and not on retreat or you know in their private study we often get to have a dharma talk or a meditation session uh, with one of the monks as well and then after our lunch, we head up to Baldanath Stupa. So this is the holiest Tibetan Buddhist site outside of Tibet. And it's actually an ancient uh, pilgrimage and meditation site set on the trade route between Tibet and India. So this is where, um, you know, in ancient times, Tibetan traders would stop on their journey to India um, to meditate and to pray for a safe journey. And now... Um, because there's a lot of Tibetan refugees that fled Tibet and now live in the surrounding area. It really is a spiritual and cultural center for, for Tibetan Buddhism and the Tibetan way of life. So it's a beautiful place to, to witness this all around you. We also visit a Tanka school. So Tanka painting is a traditional Tibetan spiritual art form and the Tankas are basically like portable portable temples so they're spiritual paintings that you can roll up take with your traveling put up in your house or wherever you're staying that provides this um direct link to to the tibetan spiritual heritage and it's a very distinct art form that's been preserved and carried on for thousands of years there's lots of rules and regulations about the symbolism even down to which colors are used and how and this has been preserved for thousands of years. So we get to visit the school and learn a lot about um, the, the symbolism and, the, and this traditional heritage. So day three, we start off again with our beautiful, relaxing morning yoga and meditation. And then this day, we actually leave Kathmandu to head up closer to the Himalayas to a beautiful lakeside Himalayan town called Pokhara. So it's just a short 20 minute flight and in clear weather gives you the opportunity to have incredible mountain views out the window as you can see in the pictures. Um, and then where we're staying is actually outside of the town center somewhere very very special on the shores of another lake. It's a lot less populated than the main lake in Pokhara. 
And we actually get to this resort by rowboat. So it's a lot of fun at first. Everyone's, you know, giggling and having fun. But after a few minutes, you know, as we're rowing on this beautiful placid lake, you can just feel the energy shift and change gear where everyone starts to quieten down to settle and just take in um, the extraordinary beauty of the surroundings. And after about 20, 30 minutes or so, <coughs> excuse me, we get to our beautiful and serene resort, the Begness Lake Resort. So this is set on the shores of a, of a lake and it truly is a haven of peace and tranquility. So it's surrounded by uh, mostly jungle. There's a couple of quiet villages with rice paddies nearby. Um, and in clear weather, you get beautiful Himalayan views po poking over the hilltops as well. And for the rest of the afternoon, you can just enjoy this beautiful space um, until dinner that evening. And then the next day, day four, is a very special day. I like to call this day the bucket list day because we get up at 4 a.m., nice and early we jump on our tour bus and go up to uh, a beautiful lookout point called Sarincott and we're able to witness probably one of the most spectacular sights on the planet which is the sun rising over the Himalayas so we stay up here for a couple of hours it's an absolutely beautiful view plenty of opportunities um, to take as many pictures that you, as you like and just enjoy this spectacular uh, moment in time. And we actually bring up a packed breakfast and have a simple breakfast up here uh, because we stay on the road and do some sightseeing in the nearby town of Pokhara. So Pokhara is a beautiful town set on another lake. Um, as you can see from the picture in clear weather, you can actually see the Himalayas reflected in the lake. And we do a few fun excursions here. We visit a temple that's set on an island in the middle of the lake. Uh, we also visit a waterfall and the Tibetan Refugee Handicraft Center. And then we have a nice lunch and there's time for everyone to go off and do some souvenir shopping if they want to or just relax in a cafe until we make our way back to the resort. And then because we skipped yoga in the morning, because we got up so early in the afternoon when we get back, we have a very gentle, restorative yoga and meditation session just to really relax after our big day. So day five begins again with our beautiful morning yoga and meditation practice. Then we have our buffet breakfast and then come back to the yoga shala for a yoga philosophy workshop. So not many people realize this, but yoga actually is not just about physical postures or poses. It's actually a complete system of practice consisting of ethics, attitudes, daily habits, meditation, and so much more um, with the purpose of really being, be, with the purpose being uh, to liberate the practitioner from restrictive mental conditioning and fear so that we can experience more peace and awareness. So in our workshop, we'll really touch on all of these other branches of yoga and components, as well as give you some really practical tools that you can use in your daily life. And then after lunch, the rest of the afternoon is pretty much free. So there is an optional guided hike. One of the guides from the resort can take anyone that's interested on a hike to explore the beautiful surrounding scenery. It's also a great opportunity um, to see local rural village life and often the villagers come out to say hello. They're very friendly and gentle people. Um, or if you don't really feel up to a hike, there's always the option to book in an, an Ayurvedic treatment. So Ayurveda is actually an ancient medical system to balance the body and mind that originated in the Himalayas and spread to India and Sri Lanka um, and it consists of lots of different types of treatments from different styles of massage 
to detoxification and even herbal medicine and diet. Um, so you can see the Ayurvedic practitioners here. It's a state of the art Ayurvedic wellness spa. And if you want to partake in any treatments. So day six, once again, we start with our morning yoga and meditation. And then after breakfast, we have a really beautiful excursion where we just walk up to the local school situated not too far away. Uh, and we actually bring up stationery to the kids. This school sadly was damaged um, during the earthquake in 2016. Um, and the village, you know, it's a very simple village. They don't have a lot of resources. So every year we like to bring up stationery for the kids. The kids absolutely love it. They always stand in two lines, as you can see, sing the national anthem, give us flowers, um, and we get to hand out stationery as well. We also get to just have a look at how they, um, you know, how they learn here in Nepal, and a chance to talk to the kids. And last year we were very lucky in that three of the girls did a, a really fun Bollywood dance performance. They had the music on the PA and they did this beautiful dance for us. And then they actually ended up, all the kids ended up jumping up to dance and grabbing all of the group members um, to all dance together. And we had a little, a little dance party at the school, which was really, really fun. And then after we visit the school, it's a short walk to the nearby local temple and also an organic coffee, coffee farm. So we can stop and have a rest, sample the beautiful coffee and also the beautiful views at the nearby organic farm. So day seven, once again, starting with our morning yoga and meditation practice. And then after breakfast, we actually come back to the yoga shala again for a workshop on mindfulness. So mindfulness is a fundamental practice for cultivating a calm, peaceful state of mind. And it's a central uh, component of Buddhism. So we'll explore some really practical techniques to help you to reduce stress, anxiety, worry, and just enjoy the present moment more. And then after, after lunch, because it's actually our last day up here um, at, at Begness Lake, the afternoon is again free for you to just enjoy these beautiful, peaceful surroundings. So you might want to have a nice cup of tea on the balcony, take in the view. Um, there's a beautiful glacier fed, you can just see a tiny bit of it there, glacier fed um, pool with spring water. Uh, it's not too cold, don't worry, but you can have a swim. Or maybe just have a read in a hammock. Uh, you can take out boats on the lake. You can even swim in the lake if you want to. But really just enjoy these beautiful uh, restorative natural surroundings. And as you can see in clear weather, you can see the Himalayas peeping out over the top. So day eight, we have our morning yoga and meditation session. Have our beautiful buffet breakfast. And then once again, we hop on our little flight, Buddha Air, <laughs> and return to Kathmandu. And once again, if it's clear whether you've got the opportunity again to take in this, those incredible Himalayan views. Uh, we check back into the lovely resort in Kathmandu. And after lunch, you just have the afternoon free again just to relax and enjoy your, your free time. And then after dinner, there's a very special presentation and workshop by um, a very renowned sound healer called Sudeep Lamsal. So he's known all over the world um, for, for sound healing with Tibetan singing bowls. He's a fourth generation sound healer. So these singing bowls, they actually emit this deep vibrating resonance and you can actually use them on the body for healing, especially for back pain, uh, headaches, things like that. Um, they're also used traditionally for meditation uh, and also for clearing energy in the home. So he'll show you how to use the bowls and he also does a little healing on each person. Um, so you'll, you'll learn for yourself how to use these bowls. And then day nine. So day nine is our last full day together. And because we're back in Kathmandu, there's a couple more incredible um, sites that we want to experience while we're here. So after our morning yoga and meditation and breakfast, 
we jump on the tour bus to Patan, which is also known as the City of Fine Arts or the City of Beauty. It's a World Heritage listed site, a site full of um, full of local artisans. And it's actually an ancient royal square, so it's full of Hindu t temples, royal palaces, um, and we'll actually have a local guide so that he, he can share with us the meaning and the significance of the symbolism and the architecture. So it's a really fascinating morning. Um, and then we we'll usually have lunch at a nice restaurant here before in the afternoon heading up to Swayambhanath. So this is known as the Monkey Temple. And this is probably the most famous uh, holy Buddhist temple in Kathmandu. Uh, it's also full of monkeys, which is why it's called the Monkey Temple. And you can see in this picture of the stairs, um, so this is an optional way to get up to the temple. The traditional way is to go up. There's actually 365 stone steps, so you can't see because of the trees, but it gets very steep and very high. So those that want to can enter the traditional way. We usually split the group into two. So those that want to go up that way can, um, and then those that definitely are not interested in taking the, taking the stairs, we go around the back way. So up to you which way you want to enter the, the temple. And once you get to the top, it's extraordinary views over the whole Kathmandu Valley. Um, and you can do a circuit of the stupa in the traditional way and spin the prayer wheels, um, as well as have our our guided tour and find out more about the symbolism and meaning of this um, very sacred place to the Nepalese and the Tibetans. And then we have our final delicious buffet dinner together, um, a chance to really enjoy each other's company for our final night. And then the next day, day 10, is really our day of um, of saying our goodbyes and being transferred to the airport. So we have our, our buffet breakfast together and then people are usually flying out at different times. Um, so everyone is transferred to the airport at their relevant times and make their way home after this incredible journey. And, you know, I can guarantee you'll be leaving with a smile on your face and a very special new light in your eyes. So this, as you can see, is a really incredible, unique experience in Nepal. Um, and after this retreat, uh, I can guarantee after running them for so long, you'll feel completely relaxed, re-energized and inspired for the next chapter of your life. Uh, you'll feel reconnected with your true priorities and your inner self. You'll also feel ready to fully implement meditation into your daily life once you get back home. And you'll feel changed on the inside, which naturally leads to changes on the outside. I've seen it time and time again, it's quite effortless. Things just start to change in your external life um, once you've had this experience to just really get clear on your priorities. And of course, you'll also have some beautiful new like-minded friends. So it's excellent value. The investment for the retreat is 3195 US per person based on twin share. There are a few single rooms available for those that prefer their own room. Um, and they are an extra 500 US single supplement if you prefer to have your own. But there are only a few single rooms left. And what that price includes is nine nights quality accommodation all meals during the retreat except for four lunches. So when we're out and about on our excursions, there's four lunches um, that we take in restaurants other than when we're at the resort and everyone just pays for themselves uh, during the excursion days. But other than that, all meals are included. Includes your eight daily yoga and meditation lessons, all workshops and workshop materials. It also includes all transportation within Nepal. So your airport transfers, all the sightseeing and excursions, as well as two internal flights. So those two flights um, to and from Pokhara. So the only transportation you'll need is to book your international flights separately. And it also includes the hiring of local guides, as well as entry into all the temples, 
the excursions and the World Heritage listed sites. So if you want more information, you can go to ashimaliving.com forward slash retreats. Uh, you'll see all the information there. But I also want to let you know about a very special bonus. So for anyone that decides to book before the 30th of September, you can also get a full scholarship to my online program, the Karma Mind course, valued at $397 USD. So the Karma Mind course is an eight-week self-paced online yoga and mindfulness program you can do from the comfort of your own home. And it will help you to really stick to a meditation practice once you get back home and enable you to experience more calm and inner peace in your day-to-day -day life. It features quality guided meditation audios and relaxing yoga videos to use whenever and wherever you like. And it will also give you an ongoing connection with fellow retreat members uh, as well as ongoing support from me in our private Facebook group. So you can ask questions here, you can chat in here. Um, you know, if you want any help with your meditation practice from me, I can help you within this group. So it's a fantastic uh, continuation of the, of the retreat. And most importantly, it really deepens and expands upon everything you will have learned during the retreat so that you can continue this journey of personal growth and transformation which is really what the essence of this retreat is all about so just a reminder the karma mind course is only available with any bookings received before the 30th of september if you have any questions at all please email me sheree at ashimaliving.com again you can check out any details at ashimaliving.com forward slash retreats You'll see on my website, I've got loads of testimonials from people all around the world that have taken part in this experience over the last 10 years. Um, but there's a few testimonials up here. So Ian Woodley from Canada, who came a few years ago, he said, uh, a part of me changed because of the Nepal experience. I find I have an inner calmness that wasn't there before. Jane Wilson from Australia says, I'm still feeling the effects of such a magnificent place and of course the continued unfoldment when one has had such an experience. Nolene Garner, also from Australia, said something shifted in me during my time in Nepal. It was like I was able to see life with a clarity I didn't have before. And Sally Stevenson from the States says our trip was perfect in every aspect i truly cannot say enough great things about our trip it was magical so i invite you to join us on this incredible experience check it out at ashimaliving.com forward slash retreats there's just a few places left and do yourself a favor this is a bucket list experience that you really can only experience once in your lifetime um, so come along, check it out, be in touch if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Namaste.